We are back with Math with the Maskews. This is episode 29, the second last episode. Tomorrow's going to be the last one, hopefully forever. Definitely for you guys. So again, I've got Mark here helping me today. And today we are going to look at the probability of compound events, which means more than one event. So the last two days we've been looking at rolling the die once, or we've been looking at... Uh, I don't know what we've been looking at, but we've been, we've been looking at one event. So today we're going to take a look at multiple events. All right, Mark, what do you have with you there? Two die. You have some dice, right? If you were to roll one of those die, what is the probability of you rolling a one? All right, because there's six sides on that die, the odds of you rolling a one is one sixth perfect now take the second die what is the chance of you rolling a one with that die with the second one again it is one sixth i'm wondering if you could write that over again if you could erase that one and write it over again so that our denominators line up that would be helpful Beautiful. Now, I want you to take both dice in your hand. And I want you to roll them onto the table. All right. And we rolled a six and a two. So that gives us eight. What I want you to do, Mark, is I want you to tell me what would be the odds of you rolling two ones. What do you think? All right, two twelfths. Well, that's an interesting answer, Mark. And I'm betting lots of the people at home were thinking two twelfths would be the right answer, but it is not. So what I'm going to do is have you guys take a look at the next slide and figure out where the correct answer came from. All right, Mark, you had a chance to look at the next slide too, right? And yeah. we looked and we saw that one-sixth times one-sixth, can you put that time sign in there, the multiplication? One-sixth times one-sixth equals one over 36. So if I roll two dice 36 times, odds are pretty good that one of those times I will roll double ones. One of those times I'll roll double twos. How many of those times will I roll double threes? One. One. All right. Great. So everybody's had a chance to see those chips. So we know that we have five red, three yellow, and two blue. So Mark. If those chips were in the cup, just looking at what you've got there, and you were to, uh, what would be the odds or the probability of you pulling a yellow one? I'll write down my answer before I tell. All right, so the odds of pulling a yellow one are three tenths. Now, if we're looking at what we call independent events, and you take that yellow one and you put it back, what are the chances of pulling a yellow one again? Well, obviously three tenths, good. So, further to that, what would be the chance then of pulling yellow twice in a row, Mark? So 9 out of 100. Can you tell us where you got 9 out of 100 from? 3 times 3 and 10 times 10. Good. So you multiplied your fractions. All right. So the chances of pulling yellow twice in a row would be 9 out of 100. Well, let's try the same thing there, only let's use blue this time. Let's see if you can walk us through how we would want to um, get blue twice in a row. What would be the probability of two blues in a row? Okay, two tenths. All right, could you possibly put those in lowest terms? Yes. 
What would be the advantage of putting them in lowest terms, Mark? Easier to multiply. Good. The lower the numbers are, the easier they are to multiply. So I see one-fifth and one-fifth. What are you going to do with that, those numbers now? So one twenty-fifth of the time, one out of every 25 times, we would pull blue twice in a row. Excellent. I'm going to ask you to erase that, and then I'm going to ask you a question that we haven't looked at yet. All right. Now we're going to look at uh, two different types of chips. So we're going to look at getting a yellow one and a red one. So Mark, what are the chances of getting a yellow? Three tenths. Great. Now what would be the chances of pulling a red one? Okay, so we've got five tenths, which is one half. Can you erase the five tenths and just leave the one half there? Yeah. All right, maybe get rid of that equal sign too. Great. So if I've got a three out of 10 chance of pulling a yellow one and a one out of two chance of pulling a red one, what are the chances of pulling yellow then red? All right, so we've got 3 twentieths. Can you tell me how you came up with 3 twentieths? 3 times 1 is 3, and then 10 times 2 is 20. All right, so 3 twentieths of the time, we would pull yellow and then red. Excellent. So everything we've done today has been assuming that we have independent events, which means that they happen separately. So we've been taking one and then putting it back. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a dependent event. So Mark, I want you to grab the cup there. Here's the cup. Close your eyes and pull one out. All right. Yellow. You pulled a yellow one. Woo. So what were the odds of you pulling a yellow one? Three tenths. So I want you to write down three tenths. Beautiful. Now this time you are not going to put the yellow one back. Okay. What are the chances of you pulling another yellow one? Oh, you were right with the two, but we're not right with the ten. <gasps> What should that be? No, not 20th. How many chips are in the cup now, Mark? Nine. Nine. Excellent. So we have two ninths because now there are only nine chips left. So when we multiply, what do we end up with? Six out of 90. So there is a six out of 90, or if we put it in lowest terms, one in 15 chance that we would pull two yellows in a row. All right, put that yellow one back. Okay, we're gonna try this again. So we've already seen yellow. Let's see if maybe you could pull a different color. What are you gonna get? Yellow, oh no. Okay, toss that one to the side. All right, okay, try again. Okay, so what were the odds of you getting red there, Mark? So the odds were five out of nine, but I thought there were ten. We threw the yellow one away. We threw a yellow one away, so five out of nine. Good. Now, Mark, what are the chances of you pulling another red one right now? Four out of eight, excellent. So if I ask you, what is the probability of you pulling two reds, what would you say? Four out of eight. 
Okay, you're going to multiply them, and what do you end up with? 20 over 72. Now I'm going to ask you a real hard question, Mark. Can you put it in lowest terms? I can't. Sure you can. You just got to divide them by 2. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ten over thirty six, right? Yep. Can we go lower? <laughs> yes. Five over eighteen, right? Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what would have happened if at the very beginning you had written down five ninths, so write down five ninths on underneath. Underneath so that you actually have some space. Five ninths times one half. So if instead of using four eighths, we had used five times one half, what would you end up with? Five over 18. So you would have got the same answer, but you wouldn't have had to simplify at all. That's why you want to make sure that you put your fractions in lowest terms before you start multiplying so you don't have to multiply after. All right, you are going to grab your probability project books and you are going to get started on the next page where you are looking at the different desserts. Pay attention, pay close attention to which questions are using independent events and which questions are using dependent events. Math. But the mask is peace.